Massachusetts is leading the way in advancing women in positions of leadership. We've got some representation of that right here. Now, however, we still have a lot of gaps that exist, especially within the startup ecosystem, where women leaders are still significantly underrepresented, as are other uh, groups. In fact, MassBio's 2022 industry snapshot report noted that Massachusetts biopharma companies received 26% of all VC investment nationally in Q1 and Q2, yet also shows that women founders typically receive less than 3%. So that's why in 2018, as Takeda, we became an inaugural partner of the MassGen initiative. Working closely with the Massachusetts Life Sciences Center, we helped increase the number of women entrepreneurs and to help them expand their networks, increase visibility of their companies, and help direct investment into their ventures. Over the last five years, Mass Next Gen supported 26 women-led companies with funding, executive coaching, and business mentorship. You'll have the opportunity to hear from one of the uh, initiative CEOs and meet these remarkable leaders during the network reception after the event, so I hope you do stay. Today, Takeda is announcing our continued commitment to this extraordinary program for the next five years as the anchor sponsor. We're building on the program's focus to create greater inclusion in the sciences uh, industry and uh, with Massachusetts Center for Life Sciences, widening the scope of the programs to double the cohort size and include entrepreneurs from any underrepresented group. This expansion aligns with Gover Governor Healy's commitment to apply an equity lens across programs and to create a commonwealth where everyone can succeed. So speaking of someone who knows about the, the power of women leaders, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Governor Maura Healy. Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll are also one of the first all-female governor and lieutenant governor teams in the country. They've been busy in their first 100 days, dribbling multiple balls. I had to work in that basketball uh, reference. And they've brought on a team of cabinet members that have followed through on, or following through on key pledges made to address housing, cost of living, and education issues. So we appreciate them including Mass Next Gen Initiative as part of these initial priorities. So without further ado, it is an absolute honor to welcome you here today. And with that, please join me in welcoming Governor Healy to the stage. Now, good afternoon, everyone. It's, uh, it's wonderful to be with all of you. Julie, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the sponsorship, the inaugural sponsorship of this incredible program that we're announcing uh, new awardees uh, today, but it's it's really uh, it's really terrific for the lieutenant governor and I to be here along with Secretary Howe and our team. And I want to say a couple things at the outset. Um, number one, uh, we are grateful to Takeda for being the largest employer in life sciences in Massachusetts. As you know, uh, we take pride in the fact that Massachusetts is the global. We believe the global epicenter of life sciences, and we are doing everything we can and want to do everything we can to make sure we lengthen our lead and, and hold firm in that position and, uh, and build. And so it's wonderful, you know, you can be over on Beacon Hill and you can be talking about different policies and thinking things through, but nothing beats actually coming on site to locations, engaging with employees, and there are many of you out there. Uh, sometimes we have opportunities to tour lab space, office space, manufacturing sites, and it's really, really incredible. So I want to just begin by not only recognizing the, lead the leadership of Julie Kim and the Takeda team for being the, the anchor uh, platinum sponsor of, of Mass Next Gen, which we're here to celebrate, but also just to say that it is really special when companies like Takeda um, are here in our Commonwealth. and. You know, doing things like, of course, bringing jobs and spurring economic development. Um, the research, though, the innovation, that has always been our calling card here in Massachusetts. And you think about just over the last few years, you know, the technologies that have come out of our great state that literally uh, saved lives. And the work that you all do, you're in the business of saving lives. Better, what is it? Better health? 
Yes. Better health, brighter future. I mean, literally, that's what you do. So I hope you take pride in that. Know that we take pride in you and are looking for ways to further support you all in your growth and development here in the Commonwealth. In 2018, as Julie said, the Massachusetts Life Sciences Center, led by our President Ken Turner, uh, launched this incredible initiative, Massachusetts Next Generation, which had as its goal the goal of bringing women entrepreneurs into life sciences. Um, women entrepreneurs, of course, have always existed in life sciences. They just weren't getting the respect or the money or the support that they were due. And this is an effort that seeks to change that. It began as a five-year, um, over $2 million commitment to invest in, in women entrepreneurs, to give them the support and the resources that they need to break down so many of these barriers to entry that have existed for far too long. Awardees under this program are given a year-long package of support, support that includes grant funding, professional development and networking opportunities, and importantly, a sense of community. They learn everything from how to refine their business strategies uh, to how to effectively raise more capital. This program, and I've been looking at some of the statistics, incredible results from this program, this investment. Uh, I know it now includes 26 company, companies in its portfolio, helping them to raise millions and millions of dollars and employ dozens and dozens of people who would not be employed were it not for the fact that this program exists. And so today, um, you know, new time, new administration, new year, we just want to take it to the next level. That's what today's announcement is about. And I am very proud to be able to announce that we are expanding the program to increase funding to $100,000 per entrepreneur. That will double the cohort size to 10 entrepreneurs each year and expand the applicant pool to those who have continued to be unrepresented in the life sciences sector for far too long. Um, so this will be able to allow us to support more people of color, members of the LGBTQ plus community, individuals with disabilities, veterans, and others to create a more inclusive ecosystem. Um, this is an incredible opportunity, not only to make sure that Massachusetts remains the global leader in the life sciences, but to also open the industry up to those who have been historically left out. And I know, as with any, everything, representation matters, uh, not only because seeing is, is believing, but we know that we get better policies, laws, and importantly, better outcomes when more people are at the table and represented in any endeavor, including in the life sciences and its leadership. So it's about teamwork, it's about fostering collaboration, and these public-private partnerships are so, so powerful to our state. And the Lieutenant Governor and I are grateful for those willing to engage with us in those partnerships in this time to meet the moment and the opportunity we have here in this state. I also, uh, again, want to just commend Ken Turner and his team at the Life Sciences Center for the work you do in strategizing and executing on this vision. And I now want to bring to the podium our fabulous Secretary of Economic Development, Yvonne Howe. Um, she and her entire team have been incredibly competitive, getting out there, getting after it, uh, making sure that Massachusetts is poised to, to get the right applications in for CHIPS and science and all sorts of uh, federal funding out there that, that we want to uh, get our hands on. Uh, but more importantly, just finding ways to build bridges and reach out beyond government to work with our local governments who we appreciate and acknowledge here today, our business leaders and trade associations and companies themselves uh, to make this all go. Secretary Howe also serves as co-chair of the Life Sciences Center and I am delighted to introduce you to her, and she's going to talk a little bit more about her vision and what we have going on. Secretary Howe. Great. Thank you so much, Governor, for that very kind introduction, and so great to be here um, with the Governor and Lieutenant Governor. I could not be more honored to be part of this team. Uh, we have incredible leadership here with this new administration, and 
I could not ask for more ambitious and competitive leaders. So very grateful to be part of this team. I'm also great, very grateful to have Ken Turner as part of our team. So uh, my whole entire life up until now has been in the, the private sector and business. So I'm new to state government and have learned very quickly that this partnership with our quasi-institutions and with the private sector is very powerful and important. So huge thanks to Ken for his leadership. Most of all, I want to thank Julie Kim. Um, this is... Uh, such an incredible story of Takeda and the growth that you've all had here, and not only the mission, and I come from this world, it's a bit of a homecoming for me. Uh, I was the COO and CFO of PillPack, this tiny little startup just down the street, and we were an online pharmacy, and I was the CFO, so I looked at the numbers and the metrics, I was the COO, I looked at all the different statistics, but every day I asked for customer feedback, and every day I read the emails and the, I read the call scripts about people who said, you literally are saving my life. I am now able to be healthy and to enjoy time with my family. So I love what Takeda is doing, both from a mission standpoint, but also as such a successful business and such an important member of our community. So huge thanks to Julie and for your commitment to all of this. Um, so it's also homecoming for me because I live in Cambridge. So we moved here uh, more than a decade ago, and we, my, my girls grew up coming here to go kayaking right here on the Charles River. And it is phenomenal to see the transformation that's happened in this neighborhood. It used to be kind of a wasteland. We'd come out here, and then we'd, after the kayaking, we'd be like, okay, we need to drive somewhere to get ice cream. And now we come out here all the time for all the restaurants and all of the parks and the ice skating in the winter. And I've been watching this Decatur building going up, this new one we're really excited about. So it is phenomenal to see what's happened here in Cambridge. And it's a reflection of the investment that we've made and the, our world leadership position in life sciences. So there's a lot to be really proud of and to celebrate. And a huge thanks to Ken and to all of you for doing that. But now where are we today? This is not the moment to you know, take a nap and rest on our laurels and just congratulate ourselves. That is not this moment. We have much to be proud of and we're starting from an amazing place, but the world is competitive. And in my own experience in business tells me that if you kind of just stay the same, you have a target on your back when you're number one. Everyone's trying to catch up with you. And so if we don't continue to innovate and invest and, um, and move ahead, others are going to catch up. And so our goal here is not just to keep the same, it's to lengthen that lead, as the governor said. So how do we actually work together as Team Massachusetts to lengthen that lead? So this, is the mo this moment is now. Um, we are starting from an amazing place. This morning I was speaking with the Association of all of our colleges and universities. So you think about what Massachusetts has here. We're very special. We are very lucky that... We are the world leaders in education. The best and brightest brains from around the world come here to study and do research, and we want to keep them here. We also are the world leaders in healthcare. I was just on the phone with a bunch of our hospital CEOs, and Ken and I have been working together with them. We have MGB and Dana-Farber and Beth Israel Leahy and Children's at all of our different um, hospitals. People come from around the world here to practice and research medicine and to get diagnosed and treated. We are so lucky to have that here. We combined all of those things um, many years ago to create life sciences. So under Governor Patrick, we put in a big investment in place, and now here we are with, with this amazing, uh, you know, Kendall Square and everything else we have. But um, the world is competitive, and you'll see that if you do the research, a couple years ago, uh, New York, New Jersey put in a, a lot more money, and they want to catch up. In California, with Chan Zuckerberg, they put in a lot more money. They want to catch up and beat us. And so this is the time now to work together. And I'm really excited. Here in Massachusetts, once every four years, we get an opportunity to do a, um, a, a formal economic development plan. And so that year is this year. We're kicking off the council. I'm very grateful. Julie Kim has agreed to be on our council. Um, so I'm very grateful for, uh, for all the folks who are going to work with us. We're also going to have sessions throughout the state and by sector, including on life sciences, to talk about what are the issues, what are the opportunities, and what can we do together to lengthen that lead. So that is the work to be done this year. Um, and uh, I'm very excited to get to work with, with Julie and, and all of you to, to do that. So very excited. And also I should say, as we think about the economic development plan, there are some important guiding principles. One of those principles is um, we need all humans in the state to thrive. So we love our PhDs and all the you know, fancy people from uh, all our educational institutions, but we also need all humans to thrive, folks with high school degrees, vocational degrees, community college degrees. And so that is an important part of our, of our plan. And um, the other thing is that we need all diversity. So I come from this world. I can't tell you how frustrating it's been as an investor to go and uh, you know, have all kinds of startups pitch, and I'm always like, where, where are the women? Like, where, where, and actually, you know, we, we, I've, there's a bunch of women founders I can see here in the audience that I know. And so we need more diversity of every kind um, to seed the next generation of success for us in life sciences. So that is one of the guiding principles. The other guiding principle that I think a lot about is 
We need uh, Cambridge and Boston to be successful, but we can't have only Cambridge and Boston be successful. So the other thing I'm very grateful for with Takeda is that you're invested throughout the state. And so as we think about the next generation of life sciences, how do we make sure we, we spread that wealth throughout the state to all of our regions, including, I, I was surprised to hear and so thrilled to hear that Worcester is now the number 15 life sciences hub in the country. So we already have number one and number 15. How do we, you know, make Massachusetts, you know, all, all regions should rise with this rising tide. So very excited to work on this plan with you all this year and uh, to hit these guiding principles, but so grateful to be part of this and for Mass Next Gen. Thank you all so much. Oh, and let me I should introduce Ken. Yes, there you go, our fearless leader. So I want to start by acknowledging the governor and the lieutenant governor and the secretary for joining us this afternoon. I was saying to the gov as we were walking in that representation matters and showing up matters. And so uh, I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am that you're here today. And I want to thank my dear friend Julie and her team for hosting us uh, and, of course, for your ongoing support and partnership uh, through our Mass Gen Next Gen initiative. Now, I've gone to a number of these events over the last two years, and I can tell you that this is unique. And it's unique not just because we're talking about gender parity and equity and diversity and inclusion, but because of the very folks who are here today. And so I think we need to acknowledge the fact that our leadership in this state has significantly changed, and that is, in and of itself is something that we should all be very proud of and we should all celebrate, because this is what representation should look like, and this was what leadership should look like. I'm incredibly proud to see this program expanding to underrepresented entrepreneurs throughout the Commonwealth. There's been a lot of coverage over the last few years, and particularly the last year, about the amount of dry powder that the VCs are holding on the sidelines and have yet to invest. Well, call me a little bit of an optimist, but I see a future where those dollars are ready to ignite a new wave of investment here in the Commonwealth, and if we are thoughtful and intentional about it, we can ignite startups led by people who look like me and other speakers who have taken to the podium today. And we shouldn't take for granted that we live and work in a state with an executive and legislative branch that walks the walk and talks the talk of DEI. So again, I want to thank our governor, the lieutenant governor, and Secretary Howe for being here and for your stalwart and already overt support of the life science industry. But more importantly, I want to thank Julie and the Takeda leadership and the Takeda employees. We need more partners like you who are willing to step up and to walk with us in the next chapter of Mass Next Gen. I'm grateful for the partnership of J&J &J Innovation, Bristol Myers Squibb, and our incubators as well who have joined us this afternoon but we need others to step up and be part of the new venture as well. And to be blunt, and this is where I go off course, because I always do, <laughs> we've done a great job, and I want to thank Carla and her team for the fundraising thus far, but the till is not full. So we need more partners to invest. With that thought in mind, I want to make sure that we recognize the women on our team who are making this happen. I mentioned uh, Dr. Carla Reimold, Dr. Katya Mantrova, uh, Kylie Averson, and Megan Dorado. Thank you all for working to pull this together this afternoon. I also want to take a moment to recognize a former colleague of ours at the center, Dr. Jennifer Griffin uh, of Mission BioCapital, who helped launch Mass Next Gen five years ago, and several other innovative programs that still resonate uh, and are still relevant at the center. And finally, while we're very excited to look ahead, I hope you'll join me in celebrating and recognizing our alumni of the Mass Next Gen program, 
If you are here today representing a company that is one of our proud, next, proud Mass Next Gym alums, please stand and be recognized. Now, as the, as the Gov pointed out, over the last five years, we've been able to support some 26 companies. I believe the number in my head is that half of them have gone on to raise either an angel round of funding or a Series A brand, uh, round of funding. I think the number in my head is a total of about $134 million. But in my mind, that's just the beginning. That is just the beginning. And so it's now my pleasure to introduce one of those alums, Dr. Mimi Yin, the founding CEO of Phage Pro, who will come up and give a few remarks and close out the program. Mimi? All right. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you so much for the honor and the privilege to speak with you all today. I hope I represent my cohort fellows' voice as well as well. Before I start, I also wanted to give gratitude to the staff at all of these organizations, as well as the wait staff, catering, security, IT, everyone who has made this event a success today. Thank you so much for doing so. So I'm Mimi Yen. I am the CEO and co-founder of Phage Pro. We are a global health startup that is headquartered here in Boston, but really our mission is to reduce antibiotic resistance in low- and middle-income countries. So we do so by developing therapeutics in collaboration and in partnership with a lot of um, the in-country institutions and low- and middle-income countries. And often these are diseases that don't get a lot of press. Our first product is working on disrupting cholera transmission. And if you don't know what cholera is, cholera is an acute diarrheal disease that can kill within 12 hours of symptoms presenting. We are in a worldwide surge right now with a record-breaking number of cases and deaths, and we need all the resources that we can get. So thank you so much for all of those who have supported myself and our mission to really address diseases that are quite forgotten. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today is why I'm standing here, and all of this work and all the advocacy that we do and the science and the innovation would not be possible without support. And Mass Next Gen uh, was there for me in 2019 during year two of the program. So just to paint a little bit of a picture of what I was like in 2019, I was working full-time as a postdoc at Tufts University with my co-founder, uh, Professor Andrew Camilli at Tufts University. I was finishing a part-time MPH. I was surviving. I was trying to pay my bills. I was trying to keep up with my student loans. I had a big vision and big dreams for Phage Pro, but I was overworked and I did not have enough resources. I did not have the capacity to make that happen. And Mass Next Gen, first of all, gave me the funding to hire my first full-time employee. Secondly, it gave me support and the network, not only from my fellow cohort and both past and future and present, all of this, this wonderful community of women entrepreneurs, but also gave, thirdly, validation. And I think we've all heard from the speakers today, there's a lot of systemic biases and there's a lot of gaps and a lot of opportunity for us to grow. So as a first time CEO, as a young woman, as a Taiwanese American, as a child of immigrants, there's a lot in the system working against me. And it means that there's a lot of advocacy and a lot of support to be done. So I'm very thankful for Mass Next Gen for giving me and my company and many others who hold marginalized identities like me, both seen and unseen, to allow us the platform to really begin building our dream. Because what I want to emphasize today is that when you invest in diverse entrepreneurship, it really has a multiplier effect. It's not just investing in me, it's investing in a culture of inclusivity and belonging so that we can really build companies and really build an ecosystem that welcomes all into the life sciences industry and ultimately all patients so that they're not left behind. So I would just like to show you what my team looks like presently. We've always been one that has held a majority of marginalized identities of women, first gen, scientists of color, LGBTQ, all of these seen and unseen identities that are marginalized in the life sciences industry. This is my present team. 
but I want to emphasize that there's a lot of people that have come through and have been um, able to come through because of Mass Life Sciences Center, both through the Mass Next Gen and the Internship Challenge. And we've been able to grow this company into an inclusive place for all to belong. And that just doesn't only stop at the full-time or the internship employee standards, they're also my advisory board. So we really work on making sure that across the board, from intern to research associate to principal scientist to a board, that there's equity among all of it. And not just of one category, but of all the different categories. So when you invest in diverse entrepreneurship, you're really investing in a community, multiple communities that know acutely how it feels and how we want to build a different world. So thank you to all of you for your advocacy, for your support, for the sponsorship and all of that because really we need it all and we need to keep pushing because there's still so much more to be done but there's so much more opportunity there to be had. So thank you for listening to me and I hope to catch up with you all later. Thank you. So this closes out the formal uh, speaking part of the program. We invite you to stay for the reception, which will be held here in the lobby. Uh, we are going to ask that uh, the Gov, Lieutenant Governor and Secretary uh, Julie uh, remain for a picture with the alum and the, uh, and the sponsors. And so with that, again, thank you for joining us today, and uh, we hope to do a little bit of networking. Thank you. <laughs>